just to do all the rubbish work for you and let you do what you do best. Now, the Free Software Foundation has a similar thing, um, and, and, and Apache, Mozilla, and so on. Um, I'm not saying that, that this is what everybody should do, because um, there are companies who want to make money for whom this makes sense, and others for whom it doesn't, or their um, it might make sense, but they have business people who can't understand it, and so on. But it is an option. Uh, right, so there are some ways of making money in free software. Nearly always, I suppose I said always, almost no exceptions. If you want to make serious money in a classical way, you have to have copyright assignment to that company. Otherwise, the bulls will never recognize that what you have is value. Okay. Does it always have to be asymmetric? Well, traditionally, yes. Now, there is a lawyer in the room who is working on the possibility that maybe you can have symmetric agreements. That's worth thinking about. In that case, I would be a contributor. I would make a grant of my 5,000 lines of code to do anything they want with. I get back the rights to 100% of the code in the project to myself to do anything I want with. Now, that is interesting. That is symmetric. It's a fair deal. It offers very strong protection because if you multiply the number of copyright holders, you are increasing your protection. You are giving back to the contributor the right to make their money their own way. In practice, the people who make the money are the people with business momentum, not the people with the copyrights. Let's not get confused here. Business people get very confused about that sometime. And they, they think this collection of code has amazing business value. It doesn't. It only has value if it's being applied to business problems, if there's clever people, uh, highly intelligent people who know how to apply that code. Okay. Now, commercial copyright assignment only happens once. Imagine that I was a contributor to MySQL a few years ago. I keep using this because this is something that annoys me a lot. I gave MySQL the right to do anything with my code to make money forever. But they will never give that to anybody else. And that's the point. They will never pass that right on in any kind of reasonable way. It was a one once only grant. So when someone else comes along to the MySQL code and says, right, I'm taking advantage of this free software license. I'm going to keep this project alive. I'm going to call it MariaDB. Um, their only choice is to work under the public code available and they can't grant that to somebody else to make more money again of that same model. So it only happens, I think I put that very badly. Um, let me try that again. If I, if I contribute code to MySQL um, 10 years ago, that same code is available to me today under the GPL and only the GPL, and I cannot relicense that. In other words, I can't build another MySQL, which is a real shame. Um, if you think about an economy in a country or a global economy over 50 years, it's a very, very short-term, selfish way of doing business. And there's been a lot of failures where the code has been granted in an asymmetric way the company fails, and that one-time grant is just wasted. Okay. So we've talked about all of these things. The very last thing here was a time lapse. Um, I was quite impressed with the mentions earlier on about uh, these are modules which are not yet open source. Now that's interesting because one of the oldest ways of making money in free, so in free software is something called Ghost Script, you may, uh, the, the, the printing program. That's called Delayed GPL. And the way that worked was that if you wanted the very latest drivers for the most fancy printers, um, then you went and paid them money. Otherwise, you just waited six months and it was GPL. And so this notion of things which decay to the GPL or decay to some other open source license over time is a very good reflection of the way the world works, the way business works, the way 
technology adoption works. Um, and that's the way you can have a contributor license agreement which is more likely to be future-proof. Now, probably is the end. There's various things I haven't covered, but I'd like to take some questions. In fact, what I'd really like to do is let Gabriel talk. Uh, in fact, why don't I do it? I have a question to you. Just to, uh, can you explain? Uh, you, you mentioned many times that Sugar CRM failed with the contribution license agreement, hurting the project. So can you explain more <coughs> this story very quickly? Okay. So, um, I like that. So, Sugar CRM have had real troubles building a community. So I'm talking about a software project as opposed to, and a community as opposed to just the code. So looking at a healthy community as a mark of success. There is a sugar CRM community because a lot of people need that. Um, it's not a happy community. It's not a good community. And there are no good processes that have, been, that have come out of it, mostly because they have a very, very strict um, community and uh, what is a contributor license agreement. The license is actually quite liberal. It's LGPL v3. That's not the point. The point is the thing they make the contributors sign, for example, saying, we own all your patents. Um, that has really caused a lot of upset. And um, there, are, there are various forks of, of sugar CRM. It's just not a happy, healthy community. Now, the Fedora community, and we, in fact, we do have a red hat, red hat in here somewhere. Hey, there he is, right up the back there. We have an Irish red hat man. Um, the Fedora community license agreement is exactly the opposite. It encourages good behavior, and there has not been a failure, actually. Fedora is a classic case of a failed project, I think. How many times has Fedora been rebooted? Six times, is it? I they know. couldn't get it right. But they had an infinite pot of money, and eventually they got it right. Um, they could have just copied Debian in the first place, but whatever. And eventually they copied Debian and got something, uh, and Ubuntu and the others, and got something that was encouraging a really well-behaved well -behaved community. Um, which brings up another topic, I won't talk about it now, maybe at lunchtime, which is default copyright clauses, which the Fedora agreement gets right as well. Did that help? Any more questions? Okay, so we can continue during the debate.